All right, Ms. Robinson, we are live. Are you ready to do this? I am ready, Mr. Thomas. Let's do it. KTTV, hey. giving you what you need. Hey. Uh, motivation, hey. education unleashed. H-Time representing, we forever keep it rolling. Join the conversation with inspirational stories. Hey. Thought provoking, hey. feel that energy. energy. Kendrick Thomas aiming to lift up community. True indeed, uh, tune in, come and see. Come see. Hey. Giving you what you need. KTTV, let's go. Hey. KTTV. Hey, hey. What to do, KTTV? This is KT, and I'm coming at you live with another episode of Education Unleashed. And on tonight's episode, I have, can I say diva? Yes, you can say diva. I that. have the diva, the boss lady, the guru herself, Miss Mindy Robinson. How you doing tonight, Miss Robinson? I am good, Mr. Thomas. Thank you for having me. Look, I just want to say thank you for taking some time out uh, to come on, bless us with your experiences, with your knowledge, uh, and just be here for the family. Yes, sir. Hey, now before <laughs> we get things started, I always like to do a check-in because we know it's crazy. Uh, so first off, how are you and how did you find some time to down take down time during the Thanksgiving break? I'm good. You know, I had a good Thanksgiving. So um, right before the break, I had an experience. I went to the Florida Classic, the um, FAMU versus Bethune-Cookman, um, I guess the bowl game or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a diehard Southern hey. uh, fan and back by you classic. So I did something different um, with some friends. And while I was in Orlando, I met a lot of new friends. Shout out to the crew that I met over in Orlando. We stayed in the mansion. We had a great time. A lot of FAMU um, alumni. And it was just a really great experience being in the HBCU environment in a spot that I've never been before. So it was great. Yeah, that was cool. Then, uh, so I'm, I'm thinking you just changed the forecast on us because it was cold, but I'm pretty sure in Florida it was feeling good. Oh, it was beautiful. It was yeah, beautiful. There we go then. Oh, in the mansion. Wait a minute. Okay, ballers. In the mansion, there was um, <laughs> 14 bedrooms. Uh, yes. Yeah. 26 people. It was awesome. It was okay. Awesome. Now, for the people that don't know, the people in the back, uh, give us a little bit of background on you. Uh, and, and tonight, we're going to talk a lot about you as a leader and your leadership. So give us a little insight into who that teacher, Mindy Robinson, was that led up to that leader. <laughs> wow. <Well, laughs> that's a good one. So, you know, I'm not an original educator. Mm -hmm. I was in corrections first and um, shout out to Lafayette Juvenile Detention Home. That's why I started my career. And uh, constantly looking for teachers in the Lafayette surrounding area. And um, my degree is not in education, but working in corrections, juvenile corrections, um, people felt that, you know, you'd be a good fit for schools. So when I first started teaching, my first year I taught fifth grade in St. Martinville, excuse me, St. Martinville Elementary. Shout out to St. Martinville Elementary. Um, I was a fifth grade teacher and I loved the experience, but at the end of the school year, my principal, Miss Mary Weibel at the time said, you know, you are a great teacher. However, I feel that the kids are more scared of you. <laughs> um, she said, you know, uh, fifth graders are, are supposed to move around and interact and it gets a little messy. But every time I come in your room, it's just staunch. Yeah. <laughs> like they're scared to move. And so that kind of started my career. And she said, but I have an idea for you. I think you'd be a great behavior teacher. I said, what is that? And then when she started explaining to me the classes in the portables where they can't keep teachers. Hey, yes. <laughs> you know how I go. Yes. Like, you're perfect. I said, oh, I think I would like those kids. And so that entered my segue into um, sped behavior. Um, I was a teacher for five years, yeah. moved to moved to Plano ISD where I was at that DAEP, Special Program Center. Awesome, yeah. awesome experience. And then moved to Houston in 02 at Ollie Middle School. Shout out mm -hmm. to Ollie Middle School in Ailey hey. ISD. I was a DC structure teacher under the great Jackie Armwood, Dr. Hey. Jackie Armwood. Doc. Um, I think she would always describe me as highly structured mm -hmm. and about her business. Hey. So I think I was that teacher. Um, and I was passionate about my kids. It was our domain. It was a safe space for them. It was a space of um, learning, feeling like if you're not learning, it's it's safe to fail because yeah. I got you. Mm -hmm. um, having boys understand you can do algebra. 
for you can do geometry. You can learn regardless of what they say to you. And at that time, gains were really high. Yeah. A leaf. And so there was a lot of, yes, they had guns and they were fighting, but also they had low self esteem. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they couldn't read, couldn't write. They 15, 16. So um, that's the kind of clash in my head. You know, yeah. they, I taught general ed at all times to special ed kids. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn here. Yes, most definitely. Because you know, so, you're going to be successful. Yeah. Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's, um, you know, a lot of people fail to realize in that behavior class, quote, unquote, that's general ed curriculum that we pushing out. And we are making sure that when those kids are successful in our class, that they get to go back. Right. Uh, to that general ed and we want them on point because now my name attached to you but you better show up in that class <laughs> and, and you know that very well being a former yes. uh, dc structure self-contained sped i think many people don't realize that we're required to teach on grade level instruction mm -hmm. yes yeah now we may we may give them some accommodations mm -hmm. but the actual lesson must be on grade level instruction yes. yeah now now tying into uh our thing for the night and it was women leading uh in alternative schools really i, I just want to generalize it first as a person who's been doing daeps uh for a while what makes an alternative school successful uh and do you think that's uh decided anyway or influenced by gender so let me tackle the first part of that question mm -hmm. um i think what makes it successful is First, you have to have leaders that this is something they want to do. It's not just a passion, but it's a calling. So I always tell people when you enter that sector of education, um, it's not a position anymore. You know, um, it, it becomes a passion and a calling um, because you're going to be called higher and higher in more challenging situations and a pressure cook cooker daily. And you have to know how to navigate through that. And at any time. So I think once you accept that challenge, you, then you have to have systems in place and you have to run those systems religiously and consistently. Even when you want to falter, you can't. Yeah. It has to be a stru highly structured, consistent environment for you to be successful. Mm, that's it. Because like you say, that, that pressure and that, oof, that steam. I'm with you. <laughs> and you know, um, I can attest to you. I watch you every day in high school, running your high yeah. school program at ALC. Yeah. Um, you're consistent. When kids walk in, they know what to expect. Yes. They know in, in, when you when they're being searched, if they're out of dress code, each mm -hmm. one of them know you're going to give them the same answer every time. It's not yeah. You're not going to waver Thank because you, you know the expectation. Yeah, well, I appreciate yeah. that. Well, yeah. Yes, hey, look, we're going to make it happen. So now when, when you think about that success, uh, like I said, for that second part, um, as a woman, do you feel like you had to fight any harder or was it still just that the, the things that you said with the systems and just making sure they were in place? Like, did you think any, any gender had a um, influence on that? Actually, um, that's a good question. I, I think the fight wasn't as hard for me as it would be for my male counterparts mm -hmm. because the DAEP is predominantly male students, right? So what happens with male students is that they're more prone to um, follow my lead as a female because most of them have moms, grandmas, aunties. They see me. They, they, they naturally interact with women. They don't naturally interact, most of these boys, with different males. Mm -hmm. So actually, I, I have the advantage point. Yeah. I can probably de-escalate a male student quicker than a male because there's some resistance there. Yeah, you know, yeah. they're, they're not comfortable with men. Mm -hmm. So I think a male, and I, that I think I know, my being a mentor to many principals, male principals getting in this sector, is more of a challenge for them. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a longer time for them to build trust with the boys, relationships where I could walk right in and say, well, what's going on with you? Well, come with me, come talk. But you know what it brings them back to, mommy. Yeah. So. I don't know if that kind of answered your question. It's kind of weird, right? yeah. But it's the yeah. truth of the matter. So I kind of yeah. have a vantage point. If you know how to use that, mm -hmm. I think the males have to work harder yeah. as administrators in DAP because it's a long range and it's, it's slow steps because our boys have so much um, distrust. Yeah. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, Due to so much negative exposure. Yeah. 
And mm-hmm. all the time I've been doing this, um, you know, I never talked and had a conversation like this from a female perspective of that behavior teacher. And um, so it, it never dawned on me. Yes. Like they don't, you know, naturally interact with males. And so that mm-hmm. is kind of taking them out their box by a simple conversation. Yeah. Right? Simple. And so, yeah. OK, hold on. Before we go to the next one, because th- th- you did a good segue into that next question, though. But uh, who's that tone and say, come on, Miss Robson. Hey, hey, that's all. Uh, Miss Stubbs. Right. Stubbs. That is our yeah. case manager. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, who's that? Uh, Dr. Greenleaf. Dr. Greenleaf, amazing. She was one of our administrators for many years when I got to ALC, and she just left two years ago. And amazing, she led middle school and high school. Shout out to you, Dr. Patricia Greenleaf, amazing leader. Now, when we talk about the 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 conversation, I mean, the relationship that these men would have uh, with the women, then that puts you in that nurture spot. But like you said, on the back end, consistency, systems, uh, that strength. Right. Is what you got to have to still make that successful with those guys. So how did you find or do you find as you still in the game balance uh, between that nurture and having that strength that it takes to really lead um, oh, hundreds of hundred men, 200 men or young men? So you're asking, how do I find the battles between the nurturing mm-hmm. and what was that the strong other? when you when you have to just, you know, that that tough love time? Like, how do you find that balance? Um, and honestly, that's a day-to-day challenge. Mm-hmm. And so I've trained myself to know when I need to disengage from a situation because I'm becoming imbalanced and I'm becoming the mommy in the situation and I can't always save them, yeah. right? Because they have to accept consequences and directives from males as well as women. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my balance with them is that... Um, I try to lead from a lens of empathy, not sympathy. Um, our minority boys don't need anybody else feeling sorry for them, right? They live that in their life. When they get to school, they just need fair, consistent treatment, and they need fair opportunities. Yeah. And so I think when you lead from the lens of empathy, it's easy to balance that. And, and when I say that, I mean, you know, in the business we're in, we have kids that lose siblings, parents. Uh, whether it's to incarceration, um, death, yeah. or just absenteeism, just they were, they're raising themselves. Um, they are very resilient. They live tough lives. They're resilient and they survive and they still get up every morning and show up to your check-in. Mm-hmm. So when they get to your check-in, they don't need you feeling sorry for them. Yeah. They got that. Yeah. But when they get in your door, they need you to teach them so they can have the educational skills and tools they need to be successful citizens in society. Yeah. So I say that in empathy is, you know what, Joshua? I know. I can tell you were up late last night. I can tell your clothes are not fresh. I can tell you're hungry. But I thank you for just showing up today. Yeah, that's it. And then you move on with the day. Joshua is going to go through check-in like everyone else. Yeah. And that's that's the lens that I think many people were working with this demographic. It's, they struggle with that I mastered. Yeah. It's an empathy lens. It's not a sympathy. They don't. And actually, it's something that kind of annoys me professionally. Yes. They don't need anybody feeling sorry for them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, but, but well, we can lend them some empathy because yes. some understanding. But then we have to move on. Yeah, you, know? you got to. You got to, like you said. And, and, and um, they want to move on. They don't want to sit in that. No. They don't want to move on with their day. They don't want to sit in that. Yeah, and it's a skill set to, a skill to set. move on, to learn how to move on. And, to, and it's a skill set to learn how to move on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I was talking to um, uh, Kefele, and, and we was talking about that when he uh, wrote his book, um, you know, Motivating the Black Males to Achieve. And it was the same thing when I was in College Station. It was, don't feel sorry for him. Yeah. Understand where he's coming from. Right. Maybe give him something, but then keep him moving forward. We don't lower him. the bar. Yes. So now speaking of the bar, um, I think about my 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 counterparts here, uh brother Robinson, brother Phillips, you know, yeah. and the team that you put together, understanding uh sometimes their plight of what you said is harder for men in that DAEP to build that relationship because it's not normal. What were some of the decisions uh, that went putting the dream team together? <laughs> well, you know, it was a no-brainer. Yeah. Um, if you're in the inner city, DAP, 
and the majority of your students are light brown to dark brown males. When I say that, Hispanic and African American males, mm -hmm. um, at every level, from the educational aides in the classrooms to teachers, administrators, the majority of that staff should be males, mm -hmm. and preferably Hispanic and African American. Um, so for me to lead the charge, to have them identify, not just identify, but connect and build relationships, I wanted them to see you, Mr. Robinson and Mr. Phillips daily. That was important to me um, in their communities. They don't see, interact with a polished, well-educated gentleman every day. So I want to expose them to something that they don't get when they, when they go home. You know, we have, I don't have children, but I have a nephew that y'all know I'm obsessed with. My nephew Tristan, yeah. um, the other mom. Yeah. That I, our kids are blessed because many of them have grandparents, fathers. But we have to remember these are fatherless children. Yeah. So you, Mr. Phillips and Mr. Robinson, them seeing you every day and pouring into them, you become that father figure, not just a mentor. And they need that. So if you're a female leader, as myself in position, you have to recognize that and you have to take action on it. You you can't be scared. Right. You know what they need. They need me, too, but they also have a lot of me. Yeah. They don't have you, Mr. Phillips yeah. and Mr. Robinson. So, yeah, I was yeah. bold in doing that, but it was with purpose, with yes. no apologies. Yeah, I, I think it's, um, you know, for me, the beginning of this conversation kind of put everything into perspective. Like I said, as much as I deal with these boys, um, I guess for me, it's normal. To interact with them but like you say for them is not it's not normal <laughs> and so um that you know that just for me that just changes everything and puts into a different light because i never thought about like yeah it's not a lot of dudes that's why when they feel their relationship they cling to me you know it's like uh even when we're in the hall you know it's like i gotta keep pushing keep pushing like y'all gotta keep going you can't just stop but it's really that connection to where it's like I don't get to talk to somebody like you all the time, Mr. Thomas, Mr. Thomas, you know. But but yes, oh wow, okay. So now thinking about unconscious bias, mm -hmm. um, we we talked a little bit about that uh, yesterday. I like, like what you said. Well, I was ironing, you know. What? <laughs> <laughs> we were in full conversation while you was ironing for our man. This was so, um, Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, you know. Um, I definitely want to talk about that too. Uh, yes. But I wanted to just ask, um, have you seen unconscious bias and, and what kind have you seen for people who maybe not have uh, experienced that type of, I guess, I guess type of experience in a DAEP or in a men almost dominated field like it is in a DAEP? Have you seen when women leaders come in and have that issue? Um, yes, I don't just see it in women female mm -hmm. leaders, I see the female teachers. Okay. And I think what happens is um, we have really good teachers in that sector, but there's a low tolerance for, I'm going to use quote unquote, silly teenage boy behavior. Mm -hmm. And it's unconscious. You don't realize it. You know, your teenage boy is going to come in class, joking with one another, maybe slap boxing, uh, cracking jokes on one another, may even crack a joke on you. And uh, most females have a... Um, low tolerance for that type of silly behavior. So there goes that unconscious bias in that they go immediately to um, directives, strong directives, and if they don't comply, then there's a referral. But as you know, if your girls come in with the talking, playing each other's hair, you know, um, a little snippet with you, you tend to be a little bit more patient. And you know what, I'm gonna give you a minute to get yourself together because girls are emotional. Uh, but people have a tolerance for girls being emotional, right? That's the way society is set up. Yeah. Women are emotional. Give them a minute. Give girls a minute. They'll settle down. Um, there's n that's not a lot of tolerance for boys being boys. Yeah. Boy, boys slap box. Boys joke. Yeah. They crack jokes on one another. They're going to crack a joke on you. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I think that's where a lot of, especially in DAEP, the unconscious bias comes yeah. is the silly teenage boy behaviors and a little mm. tolerance for it. Yeah, you know, um, not allowing boys yeah. to be boys, and then getting them back on track without giving them a discipline or consequence for it. Yeah, yeah, helping them understand. 
Yeah. Um, I had a friend of mine and we were talking about that and uh, we were referencing it as in elementary. Uh, and we said how the teachers always say, well, give me a few boys to help me carry uh, these boxes or these crates. But that's already creating that bias. In reality, how much stronger is an elementary boy versus an elementary girl? Yeah. Right. You know, oh, so, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, you know that exactly. Wow. So yeah, we do we do create those. Uh, and and I think men are pretty much the same too. Uh, I don't know, if, or maybe it's just a soft spot we have for uh, like the lady students. Yeah, and, and that's what I think it is. Students. I think that girls, even for men, you know, it's a girl. Many men have daughters or nieces. Yeah. It's a soft spot. Yeah. Um, and boys, I think we have to get out of the mindset of he need to act like a man, but he's not. Yeah. He's a boy. Yeah. <laughs> he's a boy in puberty. Him. He's a little boy that's seven, but he's not. We put um, unre unrealistic behavior expectations on. These are still children. Mm. They're not yeah. full grown men. They're yeah. children. A lot of to still be children, as long as it's not out of control, but allow them that, that time and that space to be children and mm. not be so impatient with them. Yeah, and attach that and attach discipline to that impatience, mm, and that's why sometimes we have to regulate and check ourselves. Mm, most definitely, yeah. Look at Miss Johnson; she say exactly. Oh, hi, Miss Johnson. <laughs> that's cool. All right, so um, now let's switch gears and talk about what happened last night. Yes, phenomenal. What the, that was magic. What the magic. So that was I magic. came in toward the end. Um, talk to me a little bit about. What were the beginnings of the team? Shout out, Dr. Creer. Uh, man, shout out. Uh, is it Dr. Cook or Mr. Cook? Uh, Mr. Jeffrey Cooks. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Cooks. Yeah. Okay. So just shout out to everybody who was a part of all that planning. But what were some of those beginning conversations as we explained what really took place last night? You, you mean what was the beginning of um, how we created Man Up? Yeah, yeah. How how we even started the man up for people? Who well, are. you know, Mr. Thomas, um, when I came back um, to A Leaf, um, it was different, but all different in a good in a good way. It was good when I left. It was good when I came back. Just I was gone for a decade, so things are always moving. And so when I came back, every district I go to, I want to put my stamp on things. But people know that I'm very passionate about at risk boys. That's my passion, right? And so me and Dr. Craig, when she came back to A Leaf as well. You know, we were Ailey products as administrators. Um, she came back as our area soup. We would have um, conversations about, she visits AOC a lot. She's very um, hands-on yeah. with the address population, mentoring, um, tracking behavior, looking at my data. We would sit and look at data, look at offenses coming in. And I would tell her, you know, we really need to do something. She said, I'm already on that. I'm just trying to figure out what. So I'm going to create a um, Dr. Career, Dr. Cecilia Career shout out, shout um, out to her. She said, I want to create this um, think tank with some of great minds of people that has been in this game for a long time, tried and proven. Um, and what can we do within a leaf and a leaf communities to start bringing males together, right? Mm -hmm. And so I said, I think it'd be phenomenal. Um, you have a lot of awesome guys in the district, just within a leaf that'd be a part of that. She said, well, I want you to be a part of it too because of your background and your experiences. So those first few meetings, I'm tell you, was awesome. Um, principals, Ali, CIS, um, Dr. Price, um, Mr. Tremaine Wycliffe, who you had on before, Principal mm -hmm. Crossroads. I mean, just powerhouses yeah. and the think tanks. Um, of course, Mr. Uh, Jeffrey Cooks, um, Jr., yeah throwing out ideas because many of them have boys clubs like you ran a very successful one at Hicks for six years. Hey. Your name even came up. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Garfield, he's the former hey. senior of Shy. Dr. Bright. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, he, um, he's a part of that, that committee. Um, so everybody in the district are doing clubs and things for boys. Yeah. And so we were like, okay, there are things happening, but how can we do something on a greater scale to where we're all sending across kind of a... Um, theme yeah. or consistent message mm -hmm. because we're a little good programs, but we isolated, we're on islands. Mm -hmm. And so we developed what's called the Man Up Social Eventor. Mm -hmm. When we came up with that concept, I said, you know, if we're going to come up with this concept and do this one more person, we need to add to this. Yeah. And I said, that's Kendra Thomas. Hey, he did some trailblazing <laughs> in Hicks. So Mr. Thomas, um, yeah. kudos to you, came in at yeah. 
meeting three yeah. and hit the ground running. Yeah. And so that was the whole initiative. It was to bring grandfathers, uncles, big brothers, mm-hmm. pastors, um, deacons, um, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, uh, business owners, anybody yeah. in the community that want to come out in fellowship just among boys and men. Um, a night of food, a night of activity. You know, we had, as you know, we had video games, video yeah. game room, mm. um, painting with a twist. Shout out to Mr. Robin Toy. Yeah. Um, we had, um, what do you call it? A sports activities, just yeah. things that men, grandpas, I say grandpas, I'm a Louisiana girl, yeah. papas, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, bonding. That is so important. Mm-hmm. And so last night, I think, you know, you were inter- in- <laughs> instrumental part of that. It exceeded our expectations. Yes. It, it, it not only was successful, it exceeded it. Um, yeah. And I know as I took my place in serving food because I didn't want to interact. Yeah. When Mr. Mr. Tar wants to send me a shout out, yeah. I was like, no, no, no. Yeah. Um, I I have had some a lot of highs in my career. I've been recognized yeah. for a lot of things. This is about you men. This is not yeah. about me. Yes. I'm gonna serve, yeah. greet, and I was comfortable in that. Yeah. Um, I've been the star of the show. This is y'all yeah. show. This is about men. Yeah. And so as I was serving, I would tell each grandfather and um, father and uncle and big brother, thank you. We need you. You're yeah. needed. Yes. Come back. I hope you enjoy the night. And just, I could see how it even warmed their heart. A mm-hmm. um, lot of grandfathers there. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's how Man Up um, came into existence. As you know, we, our goal is to come to another school real soon, hopefully in January or February. Um, again, I can't take all the credit. I'm glad yeah. to be a part of the inception of it, one of the founders of it. But I thank you for being on this founding committee, yeah. your dedication to it as well. And anyone tuning in, I hope if you are a male that you'll be looking for our next event and that you show next up. Event. You well, are needed. Look, this is uh, Miss Hawkins. She say men are so most definitely. Like, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey. Amazing. Yeah. ALC teacher, um, great behavior interventionist. You are much appreciated, ALC. (laughs) Yes, she is. That's the gatekeeper. (laughs) So now, um, I I just heard everything you said, and it was so very humbling and and all that. But uh, let's keep it real, Ralph. You know (laughs) that this probably wouldn't happen (laughs) without that work uh, that you did. So I want to say thank you. Uh, for your part and, and for the grind that you put up, uh, the coordination that you put together, the telephone calls, uh, the text messages, uh, <laughs> you know, so much, um, you know, so um, like you say, and and each, each person had a piece of it. But mm-hmm. I think without that uh, coordination that you put together as me watching you uh, day in and day out, I don't know, you know, so big shots out well, to you. Thank you. And you know, I just want to say this to you all, you know, because I know we have a lot of leaders that are on and aspiring yeah. leaders mm-hmm. that every role sometimes in a, as a leader is not in the spotlight. Yeah. You have to be comfortable with com- comfortable with that. Um, I know Dr. Greenleaf is on. She's um, a female minister. She's in ministry. And, you know, we talk about church things when we work together. She and I as administrators at ALC, you know, that's that's parking lot ministry. There's, um, you know, pastor's aid. I serve a pastor's aid in my church. Mm-hmm. There's different ministries. And just because I'm the principal, and you're right, I did coordinate a lot of that man, man up. <laughs> it doesn't mean I have to flex and be in the front of it, yeah. you know, because yeah. the greater good is that the event happened yeah. and we had all of those magnificent boys and men in one spot. So, I'm talking about that we was brought the problem. out. Look, that was and the uh, I was able to go in uh, to the to the game room. I end up connecting with one of the dads. Uh, we talked a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, just talked a lot. Uh, was able to interact with the uh, boys on the basketball court. Uh, you know, when I was struggling, blood pressure sky high. Learn now, I'm still out there trying to play ball and just pulling because I really, um, you know, you really couldn't just do anything but feel proud that to see those uncles, those granddaddies, those brothers, uh, just really pouring back into those young guys coming in. So, really, really awesome. Uh, we got and some more know, stuff. And uh-huh. you know, I want to say this one piece for you all, yeah. Mr. Thomas. I thank you all for being those role models. Um, I know for me, growing up in low socioeconomic, um, you never know how you're changes, changing a child's life just by your presence. Um, coming home from school, I remember seeing a lady with her hair pinned up, kind of like I have mine. I got this natural working up today. Hey, you know, girls and fail, but hey. um, she drove a long green Jaguar and she was so poised and well dressed. 
I don't know her name, but I know my fifth grade teacher, you had the opportunity to meet when yeah. she came to school to see me. Um, shout out to Miss Barbara Landor. Um, you don't know how you change a kid's life by just being who you are. And I know some of those ladies, I aspire yeah. to be one of them. So um, you are interacting with them in Man Up. You're changing lives. Yeah. Those kids are looking at you and, and somebody's looking at even Mr. Kendrick Thomas and aspiring to be you. Yeah. So thank you for dedicating to the work. Yes. Uh, it was so funny, you know, in the elementary for career day, uh, we would have kids come in with their ties on and say, I want to be Mr. Thomas. I said, come on, Al. <laughs> some of them <laughs> about it. Yeah. All right. That's all. Uh, who's that? Miss Hawkins again. She said, I love our team. Uh, we, we got I another. Do too. Hey, I do too. Look at Miss Cardoza. Oh, Miss uh, Cardoza, shout out. out. Shout out. Uh, true man is so needed. My dad plays a big role in our life. He keeps us in shape. Hey, got to keep it going. Shout man. out to Miss Cardoza. She is um, on our counseling team. She yeah. makes sure our kids' days are counted. They're earning yeah. those days, encouraging them, and getting them to exit and get back to the main campus. Uh, yeah. Shout out to you, Miss Cardoza, for the work that you do at ALC. Amen. So now, I know you've been in the game for a while. Um, and although it's been fun, there is a time when you're going to land that plane. <laughs> so I want to know now. Have you already oh. been? Okay. <laughs> but, hey, what you say? Four. <laughs> <Not> four, four. <laughs> so what? What's the plans? What have you been thinking about? Um, or are you gonna just move to Aruba? What's What's going on? Um, you know, I you know I can truly tell you. Um, I'm sure my sisters are logged in. You know, I had humble beginnings, and we had a. A tough life, you know, being parentless young, um, it was it was tough for us. And so God truly blessed my path. You know, one or two of my classmates may even sign in. I never thought I'd be a principal. I knew I was going to be successful because I always carried my, myself in that way, but never thought I'd be a principal. But being blessed to be a assistant principal at 30, a building principal at 35, um, I'm going to be turning a big 5 -oh next week. Next week. I mean, that's a blessed career. And so I have four more years after this year to retire. I'm still going to be young. So that's like 54 ish. Yes, young. Um, but going full blast, I want to go out on the high. I want to pass the baton to you, Mr. Phillips or Mr. Robinson on the high. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes when you start getting on the other side and you're still there, I don't know how effective you are when you've been doing it for so long. Mm -hmm. That's a burnout. I want to go out on the high, pass the baton on. Yeah. Um, I would love to go back to law school. Um, you know, my my office, I'm always yeah. pointing to my shelf, the law yeah. books. Yes. Dr. Greenleaf is on. She knows. Now she's into the, the policy and law books. Mm -hmm. I love school law. I love um, HR. I love policy. Um, if anything, I think I would go more on the side of sitting on maybe a board, mm -hmm. working with writing policy, yeah. working with maybe um, um, advocacy. For parents, schools, kids, more, you know, policy, legal. Yeah, yeah. That's more of my first love. Mm -hmm. HR, grievances, things of that nature. If you all, you know that I'm always yeah. pointing to those law books. Yeah, look. I, I actually read them. People don't even know school law book books exist. Yeah. They do, and I actually read them. I'm telling you. I'd be more along those lines, um, things in policy and law. Yeah, but very, very much needed. Um, yeah. You know, like I said, when I had Dr. Bro on, you know, just uh, the inside head of, Yes. Just the work that she's doing, policy. Yeah. yeah, just going in and talking about that, um, helping schools kind of tighten up to get compliant with the policy. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, most definitely. Well, um, I want to say thank you for this time. Um, it is the season finale, and so this is very important to me that you help me go out this season on a high. Uh, and so before we do that, I want to take a few minutes and just – play a little video for some more of our friends and we'll see how many people you know from this video here. <laughs> All right, hold up y'all, let's, let's check this out. Hi, I'm Dr. Darlene Bro, and I am the Vice President of the A-Leaf ISD School Board. I have known Kendrick for a little over a decade and I am just so impressed and proud of him. His leadership, his ability to connect with the community, with uh, fellow educators, 
and also the students, the impact that he's made on so many lives. I've been on his show a couple of times as a guest and the insightful questions that he asks and also the content, the relevant content that he has on his show. I am just so incredibly proud of Kendrick and I would like to say great job and congratulations on your season finale. Hi there. I'm Coach Sheila, host and creator of the CEO Circle Live. Wishing Kendrick Thomas with KTT TV best wishes. Man, I am super excited for everything that you are doing. You are doing an awesome job in this media world. I love your show. I was so excited and delighted to be a guest on KTT TV. Keep doing you. Keep doing your best and well wishes to you. What's up, Kendrick? It's Crystal Victoria from Target Evolution Inc. I'm reaching out to shout you out and say thank you for the opportunity for interviewing us, for all of your support. We truly appreciate you. I can't wait to see what you do and who you have on the show for next season. And congrats on an amazing season finale. Keep doing you and thank you again for all your support. Hi, Kendrick, KT. This is Dr. Teresa Smith, Dr. Taz, Taz in the kitchen. And I'm here in my kitchen because that's where we were earlier this year. You were a guest on my show, Transform of Taz, and you were such a blessing to my audience. And I just want to say to you, you have had a very, very successful season. Thank you for letting me be a part of your show. And thank you for never giving up on our communities and on our youth. You are a bright beacon of hope for so many individuals. So congratulations on a wonderful season. And we know there are going to be many, many more to come. Thank you for all that you do. And again, thank you for being a guest on my show, Transform with Taz, here in Raleigh, North Carolina. As always, take care of you. Bye now. Hi, my name is Dr. Kelly Brown. I'm an assistant professor at Lamar University. I'm the principal consultant of One World Consulting. I would like to say thank you for another great season. Um, I really appreciate the work that you do to highlight the voices of um, people in and around the Houston area, as well as what you do in education. So I hope you have a restful break and looking forward to the next season. Bye. My name is Olivia Cook, also known as Coach Liv. I am a transformational success coach, podcast host, motivational speaker, and Christian influencer. And I was on KTTV a few months back, and I must say it was one of my most memorable experiences. You know, Kendrick really takes his time to get to know his guest and also just provide so much information to his listeners and viewers. If you haven't checked it out, you definitely need to. Hey, hey, guys, it's your coach, your friend, your girl, Coach Rena JD, international change agent. I am the president and CEO of Rena JD Enterprises, and I was a guest on Daily K Podcast with KT. Let me tell you, we had an amazing time discussing managing expectations. Let me tell you, our talk was so good. We ran through time, over time, and out of time on that time. I mean, it was an amazing discussion. If you missed it, shame on you. Go back and catch the recap. But let, guess what? We are at the season finale. So congratulations, Kendrick. You did it. You did it, my brother. And it's wonderful meeting you. Have me back again so we could talk about some yummy goodness. Again, this is your coach, Rita JD. Talk to you guys soon. Mwah. Love you. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. I'm Nakia Franklin of Brave Enterprises, Brave Moms Speak Up. And of the Real and Raw Talk Show with Nakia Franklin and Von Greta. I am so excited of KT and the season finale. I just wanted to say that his episodes have been amazing. They have been informative. I appreciate the guests that he brings on. They're authentic. They're transparent. They talk about real issues, real concerns. 
and they bring the truth and the facts to the table. So KT, congratulations. I'm so excited for you and your season finale. I wish you well with all of your endeavors. I know you are doing it big and you're expanding and you're maturing and growing in every aspect of the way. Keep doing it big, keep expanding, keep doing all of the great things that you anticipate doing. I appreciate your support system that is really helping you mold yourself into this amazing human being. So congratulations. Again, this is Nakia Franklin with Brave Enterprises and Brave Moms Speak Up and the Real and Raw Talk Show with Nakia Franklin and Von Greta. Have an amazing day. Wow. Man, that was real powerful yeah that was my opinion. and that you are yeah i appreciate that hey all right so now um we did it we did it miss robson I, I did my first uh season of education at least uh you know you're thinking about uh starting this out with principal Cafele uh and yes. ending it with mindy robinson hey Thank you. <laughs> it, was a, it was a pleasure hey. i feel honored all right well um i will uh see you tomorrow same place. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is KT for KTTV signing out. 100. This is Darnell Broadcast Houston. This is Dr. Tamara Beckford. Hey, this is Candace. This is London Underwood. This is Kirsten Bass with Inner City Greens, and you're watching. Y'all are now tuned in to KTTV. 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 Is that right? <laughs>